Hey friends, I'm Miss Dylan and today I'm gonna sit down and make some fall and Halloween themed Play-Doh. So Play-Doh is a staple for my classroom. We use it every week. My kiddos love it to just use in like their free time to get their fine motor skills working and to get like some sensory play. Or we use it for like an educational purpose where they put down Play-Doh mats and they have to make the certain shapes or certain letters or numbers. So I don't know why I'm doing this. So like I said, Play-Doh is like a favorite in my classroom. We always have some kind, we always have some color. It's just, it's just the best, it's just the best. So I figured I'd make some Play-Doh with you guys so you could either bring it back home and use it with your kiddos at home or maybe bring it to your classroom, whatever you guys want. I just thought why not sit down and do this kind of together. So let's get started. All right, so the first step is pouring two um, cups of flour into your bowl. So I'm gonna make my fall Play-Doh. So I'm gonna make my fall Play-Doh in this one and then I'm gonna make my Halloween Play-Doh in this one. I'm gonna make them at the same time so you can just kind of see and follow along. So I got my flour. I'm gonna do two, two cups in each bowl. And this is not like an exact recipe. You guys can kind of just do what works. And I'll make sure I post the recipe in the description. So just check that out and you can get the exact recipe that I have. So I'm done with this. Good. All right, so I have two cups of flour in each bowl. Next step is one half cup of salt in each one. We have two cups of flour and a half cup of salt in each one. We're done with that. So the next step is mixing in two tablespoons of cream of tartare. Okay. Okay, I'm back with the cream of tartare. Definitely get the big ones because this is like enough for one or two rounds of Play-Doh. So might as well get the big ones so you could actually make a good amount, or at least if you're in a classroom. Okay, next up is two tablespoons of oil. That one got a little extra. Like I said, it's fine. Nothing's exact. So we have the flour, we have the salt, we have the cream of tartare, and we have our oil. Next is to pour water. Now this is, it was boiling water, so it's really warm. So that's kind of what helps mixes it up and melts it and makes it into the Play-Doh consistency. So I have two separate ones because you have to do the color first. You don't mix the color into the powder. You have to mix the color into the water first. That's something I've kind of learned the hard way, but it works the best when you do so. So I'm just gonna, Gonna drop that in there, mix it up. I can't really show you. Oh yeah, there we go. Ah, yeah. Orange, boiling water in here. Not really boiling, kind of just warm. And then I'm gonna do red in here for my fall Play-Doh. And since you're mixing it with white flour, the um, food coloring or water colors, always ends up being a little lighter than you would expect. So I always try to add a little more color and make it really deep and rich. And then once you mix it up, it turns into like a normal color Play-Doh. So that's what I'm doing. And then you just mix it in. So I'm gonna do the red one first. I don't think it matters. So I'm gonna do red in here and red is gonna be for my fall Play-Doh. I kinda wanted to go for like an apple theme so I'm gonna pour it in, then I'm gonna mix it up. Mix it up. And then you're just literally just gonna sit and mix it. And then you're gonna knead it. Once it kinda um, becomes more of the dough consistency, you could take it out and then you could start kneading it. So 
for that one, I actually like poured it all in at the same time. I don't know why I did that. You're actually supposed to kind of do a little bit at a time and then mix. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Ooh, this is like a reddish orange. Hopefully it just turns orange. That's weird. But if you see, this one's already like looking a little thicker and it's because I'm doing it a little at a time. So that one will still, this red one will still turn out fine. I'll probably add a little more um, flour to it, but it will make your life a little easier if you slowly add the water and then mix and then slowly add more water and then mix. So I'm just gonna kind of stir them up in here. They kind of look the same, but they're not. This one's orange and it's gonna be more like Halloween and pumpkin themed. And then that one is gonna be red and fall themed and really cool. And I have some cool things to show you um, if you wanna get some ideas on how to set this up with your classroom or with your kiddos at home. So that's what I'm gonna show you after I'm done making the Play-Doh. But do you see what I mean by it getting lighter? It almost looks like a pastel orange because of the orange mixing with the white. But this one, I added so much red that it became like a really nice bright red, which I love. All right, so I'm gonna add more flour to these because they both totally need more. And that's kind of what you guys could do too as you're making your Play-Doh. Just kind of check for, um, for the consistency and see how much more flour you need to add. already looking a lot more like play-doh so you just kind of got to work it and get it going until you get it to be the consistency that you desire so this smells like play-doh <laughs> I feel like it smells like a preschool classroom. That's kind of one of the smells that I distinguish or that I associate with preschool is Play-Doh. So it's kind of like a nostalgic smell. This one still needs more. So like I said, that's why I said that the, um, that the recipe is not exact because sometimes I haven't needed to add any flour and I follow the recipe exactly. And then other times like this, I'm adding like literally another cup of flour and it's turning out just fine. It's almost Play-Doh, it's almost there. <laughs> so it just needs some like elbow grease and it needs some, uh, maybe a little more flour and then we will be good to go. So I'm kneading this Play-Doh. It's all over my hands, that's kind of what happens until you get all that flour worked in there. All right, so check this out. And there's still some like flour that needs to be mixed in. But you could see just like that, we're creating our plate. So this is something you could do with your kiddos in your kitchen, or you could just do it by yourself to have it ready. But, awesome it's super easy to do okie dokie so we have our play-doh it's amazing it's beautiful it's everything we dreamed it to be and as long as you zip it up and keep it nice and tight you could each give them a little blob of it and they go crazy and they love it so i hope this helped i hope you can make play-doh like this i know you can i know you can do it it's so fun your kids will love it you might love it too it is a little messy, but it's worth it. Come on. So this is our red Play-Doh. It's done, it's wonderful. And let's do our orange one. All right. So it always gets like insanely sticky <laughs> during this part, but like have faith and keep going and I promise it will look good. So keep going. I know it's looking doubtful, but you could do it. As 
you can see, the flower definitely made the orange a little lighter. So if you don't want that to happen, make sure you're adding extra color into the boiling water beforehand. Because you can't really add any more color once you put the water in the dry, the dry mixture. So do it before and then you'll be good. All right, so now we have our orange Play-Doh. Just needs a little bit more work and then it's done. This is the same, it's same recipe, same thing. Turned out amazing. See, it's sticky in the beginning, but as long as you keep working it, it comes out great. Okay, so now that we've made our Play-Doh, we have our red fall and we have our orange Halloween Play-Doh. I'm gonna kind of show you what I would do next to set it up with my kiddos in my classroom. I'm gonna start with the Halloween Play-Doh. So this is what I like to call an invitation to play or invitation to create. I don't like to call them, everyone calls them that, but that's what it is. So you kind of get like a chip dip tray. I'm gonna show you in detail all of them, don't worry. And then you kind of just set up all the options that they could use for their Play-Doh and to create with it. So like obviously this is our Halloween one, so this will go with the orange Play-Doh. So what I'll do is I'll give each child maybe this much on a tray at the Play-Doh table, and then this goes in the middle. And they have all these different options of what they want to use to play or create with their Play-Doh. So I put googly eyes so they could stick it and maybe make a spooky face. So I put colored googly eyes, regular, and then big ones. So they have options. I also um, went to the dollar store and load it up because the dollar store is the best place for life. Um, the dollar store and the dollar spot at Target are the best place to find little manipulatives or trinkets for your Play-Doh. So I got these little creepy critters. These are really cool because you know you could press them into the Play-Doh and then you have that silhouette or that mold into your Play-Doh. So I got those. They come with like bats and bugs and like I said they're so cool. So I have those. And then I also, at the dollar store, got these little eraser toppers. And I thought that they would be cool that they could act as little characters for their Play-Doh. They could stick them in and create little stories and do whatever they want with them. So I thought those were awesome for my Play-Doh set for the Halloween theme. And then I also got, these are called vase fillers. Um, it, they're, I think they're just little like styrofoamish balls, but there's, there's glitter on them and they're black and orange. So I thought perfect for Halloween. You can stick them in and do the same thing. Create something cool, spooky, whatever they want. This is their time to kind of like decompress and work by themselves or work with a friend. But you know, just to kind of do whatever they want and feel good about doing it. So that's why I like to set up all these different options so they have options of what they want to create or what they want to do or what they want to make. So the last thing I put in here are just little pipe cleaners. Maybe they can make like a spider or they can bend them and make like a, a mad face or like angry eyebrows, something funny. So that's all I did. It was like super easy. I spent $3 on the little trinkets from the dollar store and then the googly eyes and pipe cleaners I had in my classroom. So that's something super easy that you could set out for your kids and they will love it. So that was for my Halloween themed Play-Doh. I have for my fall themed Play-Doh. I kind of chose for like an apple theme. Like I said, I'll show you to these, I'll show you these a little better. But so I put another one of the chips and dip trays out. This will go in the middle of the table and then the friends will kind of be surrounding it. So in this one, I put these little tweezers, which I've never done with Play-Doh, but since I also put these little beans in, I thought, that would kind of be a cool way to work on their fine motor skills as well, to pick up the beans and put it in their Play-Doh. So I thought that was cool. So I stuck four little um, tweezers in there. Like I said, I put all these beans in. These are just, I think they're kid kidney beans. We use them for another sensory bin we did, but we save them and then use them again for something else. So I put the, the tweezers, the beans, and then I went and just collected some leaves. I wanted this to be kind of a more nature-y um, Play-Doh. So that's why I did the tweezers, the beans, some leaves. I just, I literally went out there and picked 
some leaves and sticks and I probably looked pretty goofy because I am an adult and I had no kids with me, but that's really all you have to do. So I also went and picked some sticks or some little twigs and then I just broke them all into little pieces like this. And then I have these are just little pipe cleaners. I wanted to go for some like neutrally fall nature colors and they could use these as stems, as little maybe worms going through their apples or just stick it in and create whatever they want. Like I said, it's up to them. They could do whatever they want with it. This is their time to create and their time to play. So let's let their imaginations do whatever they want. So that's it. These are them. I hope I kind of inspired you guys to do something new and exciting with your Play-Doh. Sometimes I just do Play-Doh by itself and nothing else, just Play-Doh. Sometimes I do Play-Doh with the cookie cutters and sometimes I go all out and do Play-Doh with an invitation to create or an invitation to play. It's totally up to you guys. Whatever you do, your kiddos are gonna love it. They love, they notice when you put time and effort and when you get excited into what you do. I'm excited about this. I know that they're gonna love it. I love it, so be excited and your kiddos will be excited. If you put effort into it, your kiddos are gonna put effort into it and they're gonna notice. So that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna show you guys kind of a close up on it. I really hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you guys get some ideas on some Play-Doh that you guys wanna do with your class or in your home with your kiddos. Let me know, I'd love to check it out. I really hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you at the next video, bye.